This video will show you how to put together the jack lift assembly file and also where to download the parts. So um, in your courses, activity 7.4, you're going to see um, assembly models. And um, up here at the top is assembly models. And you scroll down, you'll see the jack lift inventor files. And you can click on that, and you're going to download it, and you're going to see it show up in a zip file. And you're going to click on the zip, and it's going to be right here in the jack lift inventor files. So. What you're going to need to do is you can't really put a project folder inside of a zip drive. So you can, you know, highlight the parts. This is one thing I'll go through with you. I'm going to highlight the parts and right click and I'm going to go to copy. And then I know that where my, um, where my default folder is for my inventor projects is if I go to documents and I go to inventor and I can scroll down. You know, I already have something called the Jack Lift Project, but you can make a new folder. So somewhere um, down in here, I can right click and go to new, and I'm going to go to folder, and I'll call this uh, OCT Jack Lift is what I'll call it. And I'm just going to leave that in here. You can make a folder in your Windows Explorer, and I'm going to double click on OC Jack Lift, and I can right click and go down to paste, and it's going to paste those three files in there. So I go ahead and paste those three things. Now we'll go make a new project file in Inventor that will be stuck there. So what I want to do is I want to go to Inventor, and let's go to Projects. And I already, I've already i done this before, but I'll go ahead and make a new one. So I'm going to go to New, Single User, and I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to go o OCT Jack Lift. And what I want to do is try to place this within a project folder that already exists. So I can click on this little this little uh, three dots over here, and I'm going to scroll down until I see Inventor. And then when I scroll down, we created that OCT Jack Lift. So I'm going to click right here and say OK. And you're going to see that that's the folder it's going to place the project folder in. And I'm going to go to Finish and say Done. Once I do that, I can go up to Open, and you can see there's our parts right there. So I'm going to go ahead and say cancel because we're going to start a brand new assembly. So I'm going to go to assembly, let this load, and I'm going to go ahead and go to place and we want to place our base first. So let's go to open and as the base goes in and starts placing you'll see this show up and we're going to left click to place and then right click and say okay and we want this object to be grounded so you can right click on the object and go to grounded or you can right click on the part in the browser bar and go to grounded that means it has zero degrees of freedom that means i cannot drag this anywhere it is completely and totally grounded on the x y and z axis it has zero movement at all so let's go up to place again and we're going to place the wedge and so I'm going to go ahead and place my wedge and right click and say OK. Let's also go ahead and place the wedge screw and say open and go ahead and place right click and say OK. Now to place the wedge I'm just going to tap on the object and we can free rotate this around a little bit um, and I'm going to go ahead and do a mate constraint. I want this surface to touch on this surface. We're going to go to constraint and we are going to go to mate and I'm going to say this surface mate to that surface and I'm going to say apply. Then what I need is I need this side to be flush with this side and we're going to click on flush and I'm going to say flush and flush. Say apply. This surface needs to be flush with this surface. Flush and flush. Apply. And now we can see that base on our wedge. It is totally constrained. I cannot drag it anywhere. It is totally on top of the object. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to put in our screw. So let's go to constrain. And there's multiple ways to do this. But the first thing I'm going to do is go from the center line of this uh, screw to the center line of the hole. And we're going to say apply. And you'll notice now that I can drag this in and out. And obviously, it looks like it's magic or something, you know, that this is going to be right here in the middle. We want to come in and create a tangent constraint as well. So we're going to go to constraint and go to tangent. And I want this side of this object to be tangent to that cylinder. And we can say apply. Now, it's probably going to yell at me a little bit there because it's going to say that I can't move over to the left or right since we have this perfectly aligned. You know, if we go to the top view and look straight down, you can see that this perfectly fits in between here. So one thing we can do is we can go ahead and put in a mate, an offset mate constraint. So if yours gave you the same thing, um, that's no big deal. We'll go ahead and do this a little bit of a different way. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this around. Let's go to constraint and I'm going to go to mate and I want to mate that surface to this surface right here. And let's go to the top view. And I might say, you know what, I want a little bit of an offset of, you know what, 0.1. That way, is that too much? Let's go to 0.05. And now we have for ourselves 
a perfect constraint where I can see a gap between both objects. And let's go ahead and just say OK. And we're going to flip up and flip around. And we have now perfectly constrained our um, our jack lift. Notice that I can still rotate this around and that's fine. But we now have the actual screw plugged in and we have that lift placed perfectly where we need it to. So what we want to do now to be able to create this the way we want to turn it in is we're going to go up to the view tab and you're going to go to visual styles and we're going to go to wireframe with hidden edges and you're going to see with your background that that wireframe object and we can see the hidden lines of the object. So next thing we want to do is we're going to go to inspect. We're in the inspect tab. We want to go up to analyze interference and say define set one, which is this, define set two is the screw, and define set two, which will be, uh, let's go back to cancel, I accidentally clicked on the wrong things, analyze interference, click on analyze interference, the first set is the wedge, the second set is the screw, and say OK. And you're going to see it's going to give you a total interference selected. Now the reason it's going to say that for the wedge is the fact that these screws thread together and they mate perfectly with each other, but you could not just shove this screw inside the wedge and it would just fit without it rotating. So what we're going to ask you to do for your turn in is you're going to go to the snipping tool. You can go to the bottom left hand corner of your screen on your Windows, um, your Windows logo and just type in snip for snipping. It'll look like a little pair of scissors. And when you get to your pair of scissors, all you have to do is just drag a window over the top of this and you can save it and you're going to put this on your drawing sheet. So this has been how to put together the jack lift, how to do the view with the um, hidden lines, and then also how to do the interference.